everyone. In today's video, I am going to be showing you a series of opening gifts. This one is one that was everybody's favorite or a lot of people's favorite from the preview that I did right before the start of December. So I did a little holiday preview and this one has three opening gifts on it. The bottom one has a nail polish bottle. The second one has a hundred dollar gift card for wherever you want to pretend it is. And then the third one has a teddy bear. I love just the whole concept of this opening gift theory. Plus the fact that this one, the nail itself is the series of gifts. So it can be whatever length of nail you want to. You can kind of play around with so many elements. I hope you guys like it as much as I do. And don't forget to click subscribe to my future videos as well. We are going to begin with an overlay of a shimmery white pearly acrylic. This is one of my absolute favorite colors this time of year because it reminds me of snow. And so I just use it and then I think, okay, I'm going to be done with that one for a while. And then I'm like, oh no, I want to use that again. So here we are. Then I'm going to encapsulate it with a layer of clear acrylic because anytime you're using a metallic flake, like a shimmer or a glitter color, and you don't encapsulate it with clear, as soon as you go to file it, you ruin the beautiful glittery shimmery effect. After it is encapsulated, we're going to file the nail into shape with an e-file. And now on a little scrap of paper, I'm going to be drawing out the templates for my gifts. So I'm going to make three different slight shapes of gifts as well as three sizes. So I'm going to draw the first one. As soon as you draw that initial box, you're going to draw the shapes of the sides, the bottom, and then the lid of the box. Repeat this process to draw all of them. You need two of some of the pieces, one of some of the other pieces. You need two of the front and the sides, one of the bottom of the main box one of the top and two of the small sides and one of the front side of the lid of the boxes. Go ahead and like I said, draw different sizes and shapes on your piece of little scratch paper. If you need an in-depth description of the concepts of drawing templates, I do have a template drawing live class and I can put a link to that in the description box below. Once you kind of get the idea for drawing one, drawing them over and over again just becomes um, easy. It's repetition. It's the same process. And so if you get it the first time, then the next ones are much less scary. After you've done all of your little templates, place a nail form backing over the top of your drawing so that you can see them through and then grab your colors of acrylic and start sculpting your boxes. Before I got started with my boxes, I grabbed six colors. I grabbed three greens and three reds, some glittery, some shimmery, some creamy colors, and I laid them out and I decided what colors I wanted to mix for my lids and for my boxes. And then I decided in what order I wanted them to be on the nail. Then when I went to go to assemble my box and to sculpt all these pieces, I knew what colors to do for what sides. This green glitter acrylic that I'm using right now is the same color that's on my nails that is um, actually not in the video if you see my nails ever in the video, um, but the Christmas nails that I'm wearing. And it's just the most beautiful color. And any of these colors that are from Double Dip like this green is, majority of these are. Um, I will put the color names in the description box below because all of these Christmassy colors are just so beautiful. I do also have a discount code for Double Dip in the description box below. I do want to mention that I do earn a small commission on any orders that are placed using my discount code. So if you do decide to place an order, thank you. Um, otherwise, here we go. We've got the lid of the box. As you are sculpting each of these pieces, be very very aware that you're trying to square up the edges and make them the exact size that you drew on the paper. But with that in mind, don't worry if they aren't exactly right, especially some of these little little shapes like these little squares that are on the sides of the lid. They are so tiny that they don't necessarily get the crispest of corners because as you push on them, you're, you're adjusting one corner. As you can see, I keep flattening and pressing this specific one out over and over again. And it's okay because you can file them and you can adjust it later. So try your best to get those just the right size. The biggest thing is that they are the length that you want them to be and the width. If the corners are a little funky or if maybe the sides aren't quite as straight, that's okay. But you want to make sure that they are big enough that when you put them together, they do actually fit in their large gaps. Once you do have all of your pieces made, and I would do all of the pieces for all of the boxes, then go ahead and start assembling them. It's the same process for each box. For the bottom portion of the box, you're going to hold on to one of the fronts, either the front or the back piece, glue the side pieces on with some nail glue, use a few tweezers to help. The other thing I like to, to do is to use a pinching tool for the piece that I'm holding in the beginning, because then it just holds it. I don't have to keep my fingers um, engaged and keeping it closed. It just keeps itself closed and then use the tweezers to pick up each of the little side pieces and pick them up and set them down. Use a small amount of nail glue so it just barely holds it and it's quick to dry. If you use a lot of nail glue, it can make a mess on your little connection pieces and it also takes so much longer to dry that you're holding each piece for significantly longer. Place the front of your box on and then with more of whichever color acrylic you use to start out with those pieces, take it and cover up all of the sides and all the seams so that there's no uh, nail glue that's showing if you can happen to see it. There's no 
no little holes, no little gaps. It's all finished. It's all sealed off and it is strong. That's the biggest part of this. When you are adding those extra layers to every single seam and every single side like that, you're adding so much strength that this is going to be durable enough that you can play with it because that's the whole idea with making a nail like this is that you get to play with it you get to have fun and you get to you know take it apart and put it back together and show people and if it's too delicate or you're afraid to do that that takes away all of the fun of making these crazy things so repeat go around all the sides if it gets to where the original tool that you're using to hold it together or to hold on to it gets in the way you may need to set it down let it cure for a moment and then pick it up and hold it in a different place once you're happy with it, take an e-file and file it. If you are using a glittery color as I am, be very careful that you just barely file it so that you don't ruin too much of your glitter. My glitter was starting to get just a little bit scratchy looking. I didn't file this little box very much and I didn't overdo it where all the glitter got to where it was like that. I just took off just enough of the acrylic to make it look polished and finished, which if, like I said, if you're using a glitter acrylic like I am, that is what you're going to need to do. I'm going to repeat the essential process for the lid of my box. The one thing that is different about the lid versus the bottom of the boxes is I didn't do a front and a back piece. We've got the top pieces and then three sides. The very back of the box I left just open and empty because it's going to have the piece of whatever it is that you're putting inside. The present is going to be attached to the back of the box. And while I could have added the fourth side, I just decided to make it a little easier myself and leave that open. I'll attach the other element to this and it's all good. It's all good. Makes it a little easier to go in and out because you're not trying to get all the sides to fit around the other box, the bottom of the box. It's not as, the fit isn't as delicate, I guess. And then after I've got them all glued, same exact thing, go through and finish off all the sides. When you're working with a color that is more of a cream color, like the one I'm using, you have a little more freedom when it does come to be time to file to remove more product because you aren't worrying about ruining the glitter. So if this one is a little worse for wear, like my sides are a lot more uneven on this one, if it's a little bulkier here and there, you have that extra freedom to file it with ease and not concern. Repeat for your other two boxes, making both the bottoms and the tops. And then once you have all of them done, you have all of your little sides finished, they're all filed, test to make sure that they do all fit together with their box piece so that you put the tops and the bottoms and just check to make sure that that fit is correct. As long as that is, you are free to move on to the next step. And now we're going to make our magnetic closures. So you're going to grab magnets. I did two in each box. And so I'm going to put them in opposing corners. So I'm going to do in one in like the front left corner and the other one in the back right corner. Glue them in. It's a little bit tricky to get them glued in where they're facing upright. I recommend using a couple tweezers and something that's non-magnetic to push them in place. The non-magnetic thing I'm using is a floss pick and then secure them with some clear acrylic, just kind of wrapping it around them. Then wrap the top of the box in foil once it has been completely cured. You can't move those magnets, they're stuck in place. Add two magnets on top of the ones that are inside the box and then set your box lid in place. Apply the tiniest bit of acrylic on top of the magnet that is in the front and then hold that so that it starts to really grab. Don't worry about the one in the back, just do the one in the front. If you're using a fast setting acrylic, I wouldn't have had time to pick up a second bead and place it on the other magnet. So I just did one. And then the one that is in the back that I can easily access from the other side where I can see right in underneath the box lid, then you can add some clear acrylic around that one. Leave that to set to cure and repeat for the other boxes. Now to finish off our last little sculpted elements, we're going to make what's inside the boxes, which is the fun thing. The great part about any kind of design like this where you're making something that is easily, easily personalized is that you have the opportunity now to have some fun, have some creative moments. Think about what you would put in some gifts this year. Think about what you would hope to find in some gifts this year and then sculpt that. For the purposes of this video and my tendency to always want to sculpt teddy bears, I don't know what it is. They're one of my favorite things to sculpt. They're just so plump and round and enjoyable to sculpt. Anytime I have a gift or something where I'm like, what should I put inside this mysterious box? I'm like, yes, a teddy bear. So if you've watched my videos and you've watched them for a while, you've seen me sculpt teddy bears in the past. And for whatever reason, I just can't help myself. So the first one is going to be a teddy bear. I have a few shades of brown that I'm going to be using and use your template that you drew to make the boxes as a guide on how large you can make your gifts, which is a great little a great little clue because you can't make them bigger than what's going to fit into the box. So not only do you have this nice drawing of how big your box is, but you can just set your nail phone backing on top and use it again. 
you do have to be cognizant to make them significantly smaller than what your box is. Leave a nice gap around all sides because your little 3D piece that you're sculpting must fit in the box and avoid the magnets. It can't get caught up on the magnets. And so if it's exactly the size of the interior of the box, it's not going to work. So it's either got to be able to like wiggle around the magnets since they are in opposite corners or it's got to be more narrow or it's something so that it can go and not get stuck because that would be very disappointing if you can get it in and then you can't get it back out. Sculpt all the little details that you want being also aware to make sure that even though it's sculpted and it's 3D, it's on the flatter side so that it fits within the box, not only left to right, but front to back. In my smallest little box, I'm going to be sculpting a polish bottle, which is probably pretty self-explanatory as to why I would choose to put that into a gift box. I'm going to give it a black cap and then a silver glitter for what is the contents of the polish bottle. I wanted something that was contrasting compared to all my reds and greens, but still in that Christmassy spirit. The last one, I'm going to make a gift card. And the reason I did this instead of finding some other gift is because I figured a gift card is just, it's what everybody gets practically these days. You know, you don't get, you don't get gifts usually anymore. You get gift cards, which is legitimately one of my biggest pet peeves so I don't know why I did that but here we are anyways and then we're going to grab all of our pieces we have all of our boxes all of our lids it's so fun to just play with the magnets and see how they snap together it's a great sound when you're working on something because it means it worked when the little magnets snap themselves together and then after you make sure that your gift fits inside the box the lid fits on the box and it all seems to work out well you're going to make a a little bar, a back bar for your gift to sit on that's going to go with it inside the box. So I made a, just a little clear acrylic, clear acrylic rectangle, long skinny rectangle, and then I'm going to glue the top of the rectangle onto the back edge of my lid for my gift box. And then after that glue starts to hold itself together, I'm going to grab some more clear acrylic and I'm going to secure that so that it doesn't fall off. Just add a little bit of clear acrylic right along the inside edge where the clear bar touches the lid. After that's been attached, leave it to cure for a moment so that it doesn't go anywhere and then test it to make sure it all fits together. Then you can attach your boxes together. So I'm going to attach the lid of box one to the very tip, the very edge of my nail. I have a, it's like a tapered square. And so this fits really nice and snug against the flat tip of the nail. And then go in with some more clear acrylic and just add a little bit right along the edge where everything attaches together. As you are assembling this, make sure that you frequently go through and reinforce everything with clear acrylic so that as you're working, you don't weaken something and break a piece off that had already been attached somewhere. Glue the lid to box two to the box of box one. After that glue has started to really uh, set and cure everything needs some more clear acrylic so add that leave it for just long enough where it really seems like it is stuck down and then once you're happy with the security of that box go ahead and glue the top of box three to the bottom of box one hold it in place and then after you have all of your boxes glued to each other they're all secured with clear acrylic really leave them alone until they are cured. Don't start just ripping on them, playing with them, seeing how they open, seeing how they close. Just leave them alone. Set them to the side. Pretend they're not there. And on a nail form backing, I'm going to be sculpting the ribbon that's going to go, going to go across the top of the nail. With green, I'm going to sculpt the part that's going to wrap around the nail. A nice long straight ribbon. After it begins to cure, it turns matte. Pick it up, press it against the nail so that it goes down along the side and then repeat and do one for the other side. Press it out, try to get it to be a similar length, a similar width, a similar thickness. If you have that second one sculpted out and it looks it looks so nice, leave that till it begins to turn matte. Pick it up off of your nail form backing and set it on the nail, being careful that it gets to be about the same angle. If it's not quite the same angle like mine wasn't, you should be able to just pick it up and move it. While the acrylic is still slightly pliable, you can use a manicure scissors to snip off the extra from the sides. If there's any more that's extra that you can't snip off with your scissors, whether it's too far, too hardened, too far gone, or if it just can't get quite close enough, you can use a file to really bring those sides in. Then using your same color of acrylic, we're going to be sculpting a bow. I love sculpting bows. Uh, start with a petal shape, nice round, round shape. Once it turns matte, fold half of it over. Do not crease the very middle. Pinch it in the center and then repeat for the other side. Glue those bow halves onto the very top of the ribbon so that 
they're angled slightly pinched in the middle. So that's a little bit wider of an opening on the top of the bow, a little bit narrower on the bottom. It's a very subtle difference, but it's just a slight angle. So they're pulled slightly down. After you have those two there, take the same color green you've been using all along and add the middle ribbon that ties the bow in the center. Place that bead down and just press it up and around the tips of the bow. That's going to hold them in place. It's also going to just make everything look finished and completed. With acrylic paint, add details to anything and everything that seems like it needs it. On the teddy bear, add some outlines. You can do some stitching. That's another reason why I love doing teddy bears is I love to paint in the little stitching. Same thing. I can't explain it. Can't explain it. Don't know what the deal is. Just big fan. After you have whatever stitching you want on the teddy bear with black paint, add the little line underneath the nose for the mouth and the eyes with the black and then apply some top coat over the teddy bear. On your gift card, you can do whatever kind of design you want. You can make it specific to a store or a restaurant if you would like. That way it would be, you know, no question what it is. Write your denomination on the gift card. Again, if you would like, this kind of thing is one of those, it's very open for interpretation. If you want to do a gift card, especially, I mean, you could just write the name of the store across it. You could do a logo. You could, you know, have fun with it and then apply some gel sealer or gel glaze, something that has a little bit of a shine on the gift card. And then for your nail polish bottle, apply a lot of shine. Now we're going to be using the color from Adam Glenn that's called Best Year Ever. And oh man, you guys, this is like the prettiest color that I've ever seen. It is so gorgeous. Oh, and I used it again where you guys will get to see a very... A very clear shot of it um, in a few days you'll get to come back and see just that color on its own where it really gets a chance to shine because oh it's so pretty it's so so pretty i'm going to use that color to paint some ribbons across my boxes i'm going to start with the middle box add a cross across the red box and then a little line going up continuing the ribbon up around the top of the box and then i'm going to be using a gold gel paint this is a gold gel paint from madam clam i'm going to be adding the cross on the box on the first box against the green and that one does not require any kind of a top coat the just the gel the gel paint from Adam Glam. So if you don't want to use any kind of top coat on it, you do not have to. And then on the bottom box that has a silver nail polish, I'm going to be using silver gel paint to be adding the little ribbon going across that one. After all of your ribbons have been painted and applied, if any of them are gel polished, they will need to have some top coat. So the color best year ever will need top coat. I'm going to apply top coat over the nail, that original pearly white, just so that that has a nice shine to it. Oh, it's just so pretty. All these beautiful colors that I don't get to use very often, all the crazy glitters and shimmers, it's fun to have that opportunity to just break them out and choose where they go and have fun with it. When you are applying gel sealer over the different parts of this design, you want to make sure, like I said, anything that's a gel polish gets a top coat. And then you can kind of pick and choose what else you want to top coat. This, the acrylic, does not require it. So anything like the inside of the boxes, the nail polish bottle and the gift card and stuff are going to need something over them to protect the acrylic paint. But just the acrylic boxes, if you don't want to top coat them, you do not have to. After all of that's done, you can play with this. You can change the length of nail, like I said, because it's acceptable. You can have as many pieces on there as you want or none at all if that's what you want to. And it's just so fun and you can personalize it and you can play with it. I absolutely love it. It is just everything I want in a ridiculous nail design. I hope you guys are as excited about it as I am. If you do decide to make a recreation, I would absolutely love to see them on Facebook or Instagram and I will see you all next time. Bye.